Welcome back to this special episode of The Forensic Mechanic. Folks. That's not the name of this show. It is today. (sighs) Folks, this is your gore warning. If the sight of oil bothers you, you better just skip to the end of the video where there's uh, some special information. But we're today, we're going to autopsy a 325L Quincy that literally blew up. So here we go. Don't don't be shocked. <sighs> so they attempted some triage. That didn't work. This is the first time I've ever seen a rod break and blow out a crankcase. Uh, we realized that there's probably nothing going to be able to be done for this. And we're going to talk about the similarities between a compressor and a human body. That's part of it, why this is an autopsy. So uh, now that you've seen the shocking part, we're going to stand it up and we're going to start popping some things apart on it, looking for what caused this. By the way, this wasn't theater. This is the way it came in on this pallet. All covered up? No. <laughs> <laughs> With that on it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this inner cooler loose. Because, quite frankly, I can't get the uh, sling out. And that's the customer's sling, and he said he definitely wants it back. I don't blame him. Slings like that are expensive. So some of the history for this machine, it was in a repair shop for a paving company in New Jersey. And it had began to run and continued to run for several days. And when the owner came in, this machine had uh, literally tossed its cookies. So... A massive air is the reason this uh, ran for days. Now, this being a Quincy, they're designed to run non-stop for days at a time. So, there's more to this than just that. And, when, you know, little bolts on down there. So just because this ran for several days without shutting off, it's not the reason this machine would blow up. There's more to it than that. (laughs) And we're going to find out. So we're going to dig into the crankcase. And Val, I'm going to ask you, because you recite it better than I do anymore. What's the rule? You can take the bolts out with your air tools, but do not put them back in that way. Thank you, Val. You know, you can't shoot these exercises. You can't shoot all these episodes and not learn something. Yes, dear. Even me. You're, you're a smart girl. But you're allowed to hit it with a hammer anytime. Get some <laughs> to get some things apart. So Wow. Somebody glued that one on. side plates are the most prone to leaking on a Quincy. They're made of aluminum. Aluminum? 
Oh my, we have gore. Let me see some of that gore. It's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> You're a funny girl. <laughs> Folks, she's smart and funny. Ugh. So, I can see a lot of what went wrong in, inside of this. Move your drill here, right? I'll move my impact wrench, dear. That's it. That's the one I meant. Maybe your hammer, too. How about I just move that closer? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think you're starting to catch on. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. And this did not come from being tore up. I think the forensic mechanic can safely say that this was from neglect. This oil's dirty. This sludge is here. It's scummy. Yeah, scum. And what I'm going to do is we're going to reposition the pump. So whatever happened on the inside of this machine was an oil failure. We don't have to go a lot farther. We are going to finish the autopsy because we're going to harvest some organs. Just like when you die, I'm an organ donor. Uh, just like when you die, I don't expect much to be left on the inside of me the way I've lived. But we're going to rescue the valves and they'll live on another machine. But uh, this oil pump has been phased out for good reason. These are the vein type oil pumps and I've talked about the vein type oil pumps in the past and didn't have an example to show you. And so we're going to pop the cover on this and show you what the inside of the vein pump looks like as opposed to a gear oil pump. Oh, so it's not like a vein pump, like it thinks highly of itself. <laughs> vein. I do love you. These are the jokes, folks. <laughs> I need you folks because I'm blocking the camera. Ready? There we go. There's your issue. This screen, you have to be able to get oil through. That's a screen? That is a screen. I thought it was just a pipe. No, that is a screen. I'll go throw it in the parts washer real quick and show what it will clean up to be like. But this machine failed because of all the sludge in the crankcase. It started for oil and then uh, seized the bearing and broke a rod. And breaking a rod, somehow got it through the crankcase. And that rod's made of aluminium and the crankcase is cast iron, so it's actually pretty amazing it uh, went through it. Okay. Unbelievably, it almost, okay, that's a better thing. It's like it won't focus on it because it's so slimy. Okay. okay. So in just a few seconds in the parts washer, and it, if I was putting this back in, I would spend a lot more time to get the rest of it out. But you can see this is a very fine screen. And the sludge in the crankcase choked the oil pump and prevented it from having the ability to supply the crankshaft with pressurized oil. So the forensic mechanic has determined this. I'm going to show you the vein oil pump, that vein oil pump. <laughs> and I want to talk to you about organ donation. With humans or with compressors? Yes. Ah. So, to get a look at the end of the vein pump, you take these six, seven, sixteenths bolts out. Seven sixteenths heads. I guess they're quarter inch bolt. But, the customer wants his good parts back. And we're going to do that for him. We're going to sort out the good parts from the bad parts. And we'll ship them back to him. And I'm glad to do that. But this oil pump won't go. This oil pump is obsolete. And 
it is what it is. I wouldn't put this in another machine just because of the nature of the pump. Uh, they had particular problems with them when they were driven with either gasoline or diesel engine, this type of pump. And that's when they went to the gear pump. And the gear pumps don't have those particular problems. Sometimes, sometime I will go over those issues with, with you. Because I want to talk to you about this machine is from, it's a change of record, 13, so I'm guessing it's probably from the 70s, uh, mid-1970s. Now, if you went to school in the 70s, now, if you were born in the 70s, you've now graduated and you've lost a few friends. In the course of losing those friends, some of them maybe died in a car wreck, some maybe from cancer, some uh, you're if 75, they're in the heart attack range too. Uh, that all being said, our human bodies weren't meant to live forever. These compressors, no matter how good you take care of them, they do wear out and eventually they go to the scrap pile. You might be able to harvest some parts out of them like you harvest these parts because we're going to send the valves back over to the customer. We'll send them whatever else we can find out of the inside. Maybe the cylinder rolls are still good. Just like they can harvest kidneys and livers and lungs out of you when you die, things can be recycled. But what can't be recycled on the compressor will end up going back to a steel mill and going into a big fiery pit and it will come out and it'll get it'll come out as an ingot or a, a railroad tie or something or a railroad rail when we die we have the choice of where we go we can go to the fiery pit or we can uh, consider that we do have the opportunity to live forever not the body but our spirit and it's a choice we can all make whether we want to choose uh, to take Jesus as Savior because in the Bible, and I believe in the Bible, in the Bible he, he said, I am the truth, the light, and the way. There's but one way to the Father, which means God, and that's through me. And when I say me, that means Jesus Christ. Friends, machines wear out, break down, run out of oil, and you throw them away. Our bodies break down run out of wind, run out of this, run out of that, and eventually they're going to quit. When they quit, I would really like to meet all of you in heaven, and you say, hey, I watched you on YouTube, great message. Or, hey, I watched you on YouTube, and I thought about what you said, and eventually I came to Christ, because if you didn't come to Christ, you're not going to be up there, and you and I will never have the opportunity to meet. Friends, I'm telling you this because I care about you. It's what we're called to do as Christians. Uh, not just care about you, but let us know, let you know what we found. And I found the only peace in my life, and that's been through Jesus. Back to the vein pump. This is the vein pump. And as we turn it over, it picks up oil from the crankcase. And... Pulls it up right into here and pushes it up into a journal there and it gains pressure. It goes into the crankcase under pressure, goes into the rods, and that's the way it works. Since we're here, let's Wait, see. Wait, do that one more time. Oh. Okay. Since we're here, I will see if it will shift. This is the rotor and this is an outside, I guess you could call it an armature. Now I've been pulling it around this way. I'm going to turn it the other way and I want you to watch very closely and see if it shifts. It did. Did you see that outside ring move? Let me zero in a little more. Okay. Just a minute. Let me get a marker. Okay, 
So we're going to turn it one way. Up. Do you see this little white mark here and that white mark there? This little ring here turned that way. I'm going to turn it the other way. And I went back and stopped. What would happen on your gasoline and diesel engines? They would run all day and they'd shut them down. And when they'd shut down, they'd be running this direction, say, or one direction or the other. They'd be running. And when the engine makes its last turn, you've heard an engine hit its last compression cycle and turn backwards a little bit. And that's what these would do. And let's say you're, it's the middle of winter and this machine was 100 degrees and it goes to 20 below overnight and they go back up the next day and they try to run but this has seized overnight and it won't make oil pressure the other direction because this outer ring is in the wrong, wrong place because that ring would seize overnight in cold weather didn't do it every time, but it did, did it often enough that Quincy redesigned and came out with the oil pump that's on a modern machine. So when you see you have one of these pumps, you don't want it on a gas or diesel driven machine. And if you do, when you fire it up, the first thing you want to do is make sure it picks up oil pressure in the morning. Friends, I hope you take what I said to heart. We won't live forever. This pump won't live forever. Well, this pump's dead. Some of it's going to the fire you know where, and some of it's going to get turned into spare parts. Val. I wanted to add something, but it not having to do with what your ending is here, and that is you were talking about these pumps would not work whenever it was really, really cold. They wouldn't always work. Right, something. they wouldn't always. Right. Well, it's really pretty impressive that it's working in here because I've been able to see your breath for the last half of this episode. <laughs> and I can see mine too. <laughs> I'm talking about zero, 10 below on a drag line. Oh, you're not just talking about, you know, no, 25 just, or 15. No, it's 35 in here. It, it is brisk. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, folks, we're going to tear this the rest of the way down. If I find any more surprises, I will uh, add a picture and do it in post editing and take care of that. This machine died for lack of oil changes and maintenance. The strainer tube got clogged, starved for oil, and cost my friend, my customer, several thousand dollars to get back up and running. That included fixing his air leak, which he found. Friends, thank you. God bless. I. Uh, if you want to learn more about what the Bible says, I'm going to put a link to uh, Coin A Corner in my description today. And check out Ken. He doesn't preach at you. He just translates the original Greek and lets you know what the Bible says. Thank you. God bless. Have a great day. After the pump was totally disassembled, there was nothing abnormal about the rest of the work on this compressor. There were just a few good parts. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of The Compressor Guru. God bless you all and have an awesome day.